So let's now see how routing tables are built as the network is operating. So let's bring back John using the representation that we've seen. And John routing table is initially empty. To construct the routing tables, as a node learns of other nodes on the network, we use k-buckets. k-bucket are used as a mean of deciding which new node we're learning about should be added or not to our current routing table. We will first perform the bucket operations and then see why they allow the construction of scalable routing tables. Initially, a node starts with a single bucket that covers the entire ID space, from 0 to 15 in this example. The parameter k controls how many nodes, at most, are stored in a single bucket. In this case, k equals to 1. Therefore, at most, one node can be stored in a single bucket. So let's now see the way k buckets behave for the Kademnia distributed hash table, which introduced the concept in the first place. So in the initial case, John first bucket is empty and covers the entire address space. So let's say now John learns of a new node and looks into its k bucket. In this case, the k bucket was empty, so John can add that node to its k bucket and routing table, and John can establish a connection to that node. Now a second node shows up but the bucket is full. So the bucket will be split along the major subdivision of the trees that we've seen previously. And after the subdivision of the bucket, the um, nodes are redistributed among the two remaining buckets. And since each of the bucket has at most one node, then we're fine. We can add that second node to the routing table. Now when a third node shows up, since the bucket on the right is full, we might want to split it again. But since John ID is not part of the ID space that is covered by that bucket, in which case the ID space covered by the right bucket is between 0 and 7, then we won't split the bucket. The intuition is that buckets that are far away and do not comprise John ID will have less information about that part of the network than buckets that are close to John. So we won't add that third node to the routing table. Now when another node shows up, now it's part of the bucket that comprise John ID, now we'll split the bucket. And after the split, since the two nodes are part of the bucket and the bucket is already full, then the new node won't be added either. Now when another node shows up in the bucket closer to John, since the bucket is empty, we add it, and then we establish a connection to it. And now if another node shows up afterwards, the bucket gets split. And then uh, since they both have one node, uh, we're fine. The connection will be established and it's added to the routing table. If we look at the pattern of splitting for the buckets, we see that it does follow the decomposition of the tree that we've seen that underlies the ID space when using the XOR distance. So notice that the major subdivision of the buckets follow the tree decomposition of the addresses. So for example, if, if we add another node in a different place on the circle, then the buckets for that particular node might be like this. So notice that the bigger bucket for that node would be on the left side, and then the smaller buckets are closer to it. The intuition behind the k buckets like this is that the address space that are, is covered by buckets that are closer to a particular node address is smaller. But since the number of nodes per bucket is constant, it means that we know of more nodes that are closer to us than nodes that are further away from us. Let's now see how the safe network k buckets work because they use a um, different scheme. And let me bring a disclaimer here because while the Kademlia design we've seen previously powers the BitTorrent network, which comprises millions of nodes as we're speaking, the safe network hasn't been tested on the large scale network yet. So we've yet to see how it performs in practice. In the safe network case, we introduce an additional parameter, which is called max which represent the maximum number of nodes that are stored in the routing table. And the routing table is constructed in two phases. So the first step is to add all the nodes that are closest to us. That process is being done actively by the node by querying its neighbors. So now we learn of a node that is closest to us. Once we've learned of all the nodes that are closest to us, all the other nodes will be added in a greedy fashion. It means that we'll add them to our routing tables whether they follow the k-bucket structure or not. So let's say one node was showing up further away from us, then we'd add it, and then a second node shows up, then we're also adding it. Now that we've reached the maximum number of nodes in our routing table, we'll then use the k-bucket structure to decide whether to add other nodes in it or not. So if a fourth node shows up, then we'll look at the bucket structure and find out that the bucket further away from us is already full and overflowing, so that node will be refused. But if another node were to show up in the bucket closer to us, which is not already full, 
then the node will be added. So you might have noticed at this point that we overflowed the size of the routing table. But the intuition behind the safe network scheme is that we do not want to lose information about nodes further away from us. So we might allow overflows in, in some instances, either on the bucket basis or on the whole routing table size.